Recently, I got re-recommended the Full Force documentary on YouTube, so I decided to give it a re-watch for nostalgia's sake. By the end of the 50 minutes, I was thinking, wow, what a good use of my time. Afterwards, I wondered what happened to Airsoft Fatty after the viral documentary iDubs had made of him. The video did have a cool 20 million views, which is entering Mr. Beast's levels of fame, so I was curious if he had done anything with it. I went to his channel hoping for entertaining slash fun updated videos about what Airsoft Fatty had been up to, or any updates on how the other main characters of the documentary were. However, I ended up uncovering a story about manipulation, greed, and scamming by a mystery figure that seemingly appeared out of nowhere. Fatty used to work closely with him, but now refuses to even mention his name. Enjoy yourself, little four foot nine thief. This is a follow up about Airsoft Fatty and how his life has unfortunately unfolded over the last two years. Following the release of the documentary, it went viral and was a critically acclaimed hit. Airsoft Fatty's channel expectedly saw an influx of views and doubled his subscriber count, basically overnight. His channel was doing better and in general, it seemed like the content was on the up. But then, misfortune struck. What do you love about Chris? I feel like mine. Yeah. I don't know, I just... He's a sweetheart, he really is. He's got his moments. I'm not gonna say he's perfect because he is not far from it. I'll listen to the solo verse. So for those of you who don't know, my mother passed away. She lost her fight with cancer. Um, it hurts and it's gonna take time. And just know, even though I'm posting content and trying to keep a smile, I've, I've had many nights and mornings where I've just woken up bawling. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't focus right now guys, just, I need a minute. Airsoft Fatty had talked about his mum's cancer in an earlier video, so she had been fighting it for a long while. Unfortunately, after a month the documentary had been released, his mother had passed away on September the 13th, 2019. He was shaken, and didn't explicitly state her passing initially, but dropped some bars that she would have been proud of. <laughs> there I am. I felt so goddamn weak I had to step out and try again. But here I am. I still do what I do. I still make content for everyone that takes and views. And I don't feel like I have a right to feel the way I do. And I know that I know it's just a human emotion to feel all this fucking crap and know that it all comes down from the ocean. I don't know. I don't feel like I have a right to cry, but you know what? Fuck it. It's all I fucking feel like, you know? I'm human. I only got so far that I can go. And lately I've been feeling my limits, and that's true, though. Admirably, he continued to live his life how his mother would have loved him to, being unapologetically himself and still producing content. Give her some final thoughts and uh, wrap this video up. So, <laughs> my you gave it to the green. That's fucking tight. A few months after the passing of his mother, his content started to change. Hell yeah. We're doing this. You boys gonna get slow instead of fat. Let's go. We're gonna go ahead and full force this. We got two more sets of time to do. You wait to play around. You can't. It's best to look at those He was starting to build a community and people were rooting for him. Overall, the videos had better looking thumbnails, they became better edited, and were overall well received. He also got on the YouTube grind and released merch that he could support himself with. This seemed great in the moment, but this would be the start of the downfall of this channel. Content would continue to be produced and released on the channel until February 2020, where this happened on his live stream. I got stuff to take care of this morning, and uh, peace out, I hope you guys have a good day, at least, you know, or, okay, um, never mind. just keep it here. I'm just gonna finish off this oatmeal then, like, it's cold, it's cold oatmeal now, but like, it was warm. It was warm, now it's cool. It was quite obvious that he was being coerced to stream when he didn't want to by his manager, so Chad started to call out this behaviour. This is how the manager responded. He's got no to take care of lol. All I did was ask him to stay live since he's just chilling, he's got 430 viewers. Chad is beyond toxic. It was found out that this manager that had never appeared on camera was someone named Josh, 
who had originally worked at a dispensary and supplied Chris with his weed. And then I saw him again at a dispensary and I was like, hey, dude, you want to like start talking to your man? Like, start chatting. And he offered to help. And I was like, fuck it. Why not? And I'm kind of happy I did because he helped get me out of that hole. So they had partnered up and had been working together ever since somewhere in around November 2019. Keep in mind these three points. One, Esau Fatty had just gone very viral in a documentary that iDubbbz had created. Two, his mother had just passed away. And three, it was known and shown in the documentary that Esau Fatty had a mental disability. And me, Aaron, and him are autistic. At this point in time, because of this incident, it started to be known that Josh had access to all of Esau Fatty's social media in order to manage and help with posting. People were suspicious of how he had reacted and what his relationship with Chris was and started to connect the dots. As people were viewing Josh in a negative light for forcing Fatty to keep streaming, he decided to host an intervention stream discussing hard work and ethics in order to paint Fatty as lazy and to get him to work for longer. This might have sounded like a good idea to them on paper, however, the stream itself started to reveal even more cracks. Uh, the reason why I blew up on Chris the other day is something really simple, but it just it's the grand scheme of things. It's how much you lie and how big of a compulsive liar you are. It became a stream of all of Josh's friends that he had gathered, basically ganging up on Fatty and literally demonstrating that they were emotionally manipulating him. The tone of voices, the body language, the way they were harshly cutting him off where he couldn't defend himself, everything about the stream had felt wrong. Are you get upset? Well, just, just like, tell why him do anyways. I get why do I shoot it down and why do I get upset? If you don't tell to him for help, he offered it. Well, you said like you, ex you, you accepted it. That's, that's so that's, fucked that's up. Your, that's so yeah, fucked yeah, up. No, Christian, he offered it. How do you treat everybody? You shut treat up. everyone like listen. shit. Kristen, but Chris, shut up. Listen. You treat people like shit, listen, dude. Listen, 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 listen. Okay. This led to some more attention and started to get covered by other channels on YouTube. Videos started popping up titled, Airsoft Fatty's manager, Josh forces him to stream against his will. Airsoft Fatty's friends go full force, question mark, exclamation mark, and Airsoft Fatty needs help. These videos not only covered what happened on stream, but also brought forth lesser known problems. It had turned out that Josh had taken a hold of all of Airsoft Fatty's social media, including Instagram and Facebook, not just his broadcasting channels that people had just expected. Josh was also demanding money for the work that he was doing, but all the revenue was coming from Fatty's previous older and more popular videos, ones where Josh had not been involved in the making of, as well as the fact that he had come to Airsoft Fatty offering his services for free. Don't quit the job. I told him. But that I isn't, said flat I didn't, out, YouTube is not a guarantee. I YouTube don't care. That wasn't. a volatile system. Are you just going to make up these same? No, because I wanted you to stay stable. Dude. Because I know how volatile Chris, this he's is. he's going to piss me off because Chris, you're, this is shit that I'm talking about when you're making points that aren't important. I never told you that I wanted to fucking get paid right off ripping. I don't give a shit. When you're making $6,000 in one month, yeah, maybe you could pay me like 500 bucks so I fucking feel like I'm at least getting something out of helping you $6,000 in a month. But other than that, no. Maybe 10% like one day. That's all I really care about. But guess what? I quit my job to help you, not because I knew that it was going to make me money. No, I did it because I wanted to help you and I didn't have enough time going to work and helping you because you are so much to handle that I can't work and help you. Airsoft Fatty uploaded a Q&A video addressing the drama and controversy a week later, providing some more details about Josh and defending him, saying that he's been a good friend and a manager looking out for him. Yeah, and so something else I want to touch on, uh, Josh has helped me out with a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, in the background, a lot of, uh, some of it's been personal stuff, and... Josh provided him with a place to stay after he had to leave his mother's house due to her passing. Chris said he was going to focus more on live streaming in order to allow Josh to focus less on the channel so he could de-stress. However, the audience wasn't settling for this and were asking Fatty to remove Josh from his life as they were worried about him. However, Chris stayed upbeat and hopeful, saying that... Great. Because the future is always going to be bright. It's going to be very blindly bright. Post live stream. Those aware of what had happened were still extremely weary and skeptical about Josh. People were trying to bring the fatty's attention to get as far away as possible, as soon as possible. His audience began to realise as soon as Josh had entered the picture, Fatty had stopped hanging around with any of his original friends, the ones that had been by his side from the beginning and featured heavily in the documentary. 
Josh probably had something to do with this as he was deleting and blocking whoever he chose. Instead, they were replaced by Josh's friends, people that he would definitely not have hung around before. You got your shirt all off? How long have you been here, fatty? Give me the key. I know you got the keys. So give me the extra key you got from my house, fatty. My name is Dimitri, and I was actually a part of the Airsoft Fatty crew for about a month and a half. I can't tell you much, but what I can say is that Josh won't give me my computers. So that means that Josh was in full control of everything. And that was a very scary text to hear. I told Chris to call me, he said he'd call me later. I told him the next day, could you call me? And he said, I'll call you a little bit later. Never called me, never contacted me again. I had texted him three more times as I'm showing on the screen, no answer whatsoever. So he just, Josh completely cut me off from him, Josh and his crew. Um, and real quick, what I'm going to do is on the screen right now, you're going to see the email that I have received proving that this is true. Uh, it's going to be on the screen right here, so you guys can read that along. Now Mike is out again, and Chris is fully back in the hands of Josh and his little crew. Oh yeah, Josh has a crew now to help control Chris. Right there, right there showing that he is separating good people from Chris because he doesn't want to get caught. Josh had completely taken over all social media and was ruling with an iron fist at this point. He was deleting comments that involved him in order to preserve the channels and his own image so the people unaware about what had transpired wouldn't find out. It didn't help with the fact that the channel was pulling in much less views compared to Fatty's original content before Josh had appeared. Videos were struggling to break 30k views with a subscriber base of 400,000. The comments on the videos now were all saying how Chris had changed and he was no longer like his old self. Nice skit, but I'd rather watch 50 minute Jedi Council meetings. And Chris no longer has creative control of his own channels, RIP old airsoft fatty. Over the next month, Josh would continue to grow and maintain his power until April, where another event would happen. The Airsoft Fatty account had been hit with another major plot point when the account was hacked and no one was able to get access to it. Chris was stressing out about it during his live streams, trying to get it sorted with Josh and to get the channel back. back. Um, it's just, it's been a pain on both our ends. We've been trying for like the past week and like YouTube is giving us hell over it. Uh, Google is giving us hell over it and we are doing our best. After a month of working on it, their prayers and hard work had paid off as they were able to get access to their YouTube account again. We got it right back. Boy, we got the YouTube right back in this shit. And we're finally able to start uploading again. You got it back. Oh, we got the YouTube back. Ah! We got the YouTube back. Yeah. This would have been an exciting underdog story if it weren't for the context of Chris and Josh arguing the week before and the fact that Josh was the only one to have access to all social media platforms. You ruined my whole lunch. You ruined my whole day. You ruined my whole life. Oh, I ruined your whole life? Are you fucking kidding me? I fucking got you on a block of me and I've done everything for you. How the fuck Fuck you. I asked to get me a block Why did you have that money, you piece of shit? Because I make content. Because you make content? Are you fucking kidding me? This doesn't work. I just said that I'm smoking my damn hole and I'll be at lunch at 1 fucking 30. I just said that to you, you fucking idiot. It is an olive bone and you just heard me say it, you dumbass. You said, I'm that phone. Yes, you are. I don't care. You're going to be alone after this. You are going to be alone. No one wants to help you. You fucking suck, man. Too bad, Josh. You should have thought of that before talking all that shit. Fuck you. Don't ever call me again. And I swear to fucking God. It had turned out that Josh not only had the passwords, but he also had installed authenticators on the account, so you would need a phone verification in order to get access. I understand, Chris. There's a fucking authenticator on my phone, and I'm pretty sure we can get it done in like five minutes. But I just, like, we just got to... I'll have to do it like while I'm in person so you can see the, I don't know, I'll have to, we'll get the authenticator switched back to your phone. I mean, that'd be the best thing Element, though. This wouldn't have been an issue as Chris had the phone with the authenticator on it. However, there was a live stream where Josh straight up stole Fatty's phone out of his hands midstream. Oh, no, 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 we're not taking my phone! Josh was in possession of all passwords and authenticators, therefore meaning he could lock out Fatty of the account whenever he wanted. 
Every time Chris would do something that Josh didn't like, Josh would lock out Chris from the accounts by changing the passwords, and therefore calling them hacked. Josh was now in full control of everything that Fatty did. Nothing seemed like airsoft Fatty. All the comments and descriptions were cleanly and neatly typed compared to Fatty's trademarked and recognisable spelling and grammar. The original airsoft Fatty that everyone had subscribed for was gone, and it didn't look like he was returning. He wasn't standing up against Josh, and everyone saw him as allowing himself to be manipulated. He wasn't talking to any of his former friends and was a shadow of his former self. In response, people were sick of it, and so viewership dropped. Josh continued to tighten his grip on the channel, doing whatever he could to make it appear like he was in control. The channel was still steadily growing in subscribers on YouTube and Twitch, however viewership was at its lowest. It can be easily assumed that bots were used during this time. Josh would continue to use his power over the channel. He would use Airsoft Fatty's Instagram account to dox other people and constantly gaslight the audience, which was a testament to his character. It seemed like Josh was willing to do whatever it took to make the channel relevant again, which included bringing back an old face. Little did Josh know, he was inviting his own Trojan horse that would lead to his downfall. I'll be damned. The prodigal son returns. Say hello to my little friend! October 2020. Robert reappeared on the Airsoft Fatty channel in a cooking video. This video understandably was the highest view count amongst all its surrounding videos. People were happy to see a recognisable old face again, and it had made for a fun time. After shooting this video, Josh started to talk to Robert in order to become a manager for Robert's channel as well. It seemed like Josh was trying to expand his influence further and leech onto Robert's channel. He became Robert's cameraman in one of his videos and it was quite obvious what his intentions were. He continued to try to get close to Robert to comedy his channel as well. Videos. Who is it? It's Chris's manager, Josh. You don't believe me? Here's a picture of Josh and Robert eating ice cream together. And there was a comment from Freddy saying, glad to have you back. He's glad to have him back. Josh has swept another individual under his wingspan. Robert agreed to have his channel managed by Josh and shared his passwords. But not long after, Josh changed Robert's YouTube AdSense payment to his own account. This was definitely not in their agreement and Robert made this clear to Josh. Josh didn't seem to care, drunk on his power, and just ignored Robert. And you call me out of my name? Hey. <laughs> Come in I'm here. Not swallowing the, I'm not swallowing the fireworks. Get through. Get through. <laughs> However, underestimating Robert is what would lead to Josh's downfall. He didn't give Robert any credit, thinking that he had Robert around his thumb just like he did Airsoft Fatty. A month later, Robert leaked a conversation between Josh and Chris, arguing the hour leading up to the video Robert had reappeared in. Nobody expected Robert to have the foresight to be able to record an argument in order to use as leverage on a future day. This was the same person that was represented as having a demon voice in the Full Force documentary. Well, it's me, just that they're inside of me. Oh, okay, so you're talking about your demon. Oh. Yeah. Exactly. Lo and behold, the very next day, Robert's account, that Josh had all the details of, was 
hacked. It looked like the hacker was extremely experienced and mature, removing all photos and leaving these images behind. And coincidentally, Josh messaged Robert in a Discord chat in a similar experienced and mature way. However, the plot twist comes when Robert had allegedly taken all this as evidence and hired a personal investigator in order to try to get enough evidence to press charges. This is where it gets really interesting. Robert scheduled a meeting with the detective, and eventually one of his best friends went with him to the meeting where Robert handed over all the evidence. It was clear that Robert was getting dragged out of the spotlight. Unfortunately, this isn't like a hero story where after the Robert in shining armor had come to save the day, the story ends here. Even on the sinking ship that he had created, Josh was still trying to milk everything that he could. He was posting on Airsoft Fatty's social media, attempting to convert anyone that he could on his own Instagram page. Unfortunately, the trail has gone cold here and no more evidence was presented. Airsoft Fatty's main channel continued to upload videos during this time consistently up until the end of the year. That was up until February 2021, where the channel had stopped uploading. After Airsoft Fatty had returned a month later, it was confirmed that Josh was no longer a manager. However, the issue was that after he had left, people were realizing the drop in quality. The juxtaposition of having decent editing to none at all was quite jarring for the audience. The things that he was doing was also quite limited. Most of the videos after Josh had left were just Airsoft Fatty talking to the camera, which wasn't the most engaging content. The upload consistency also took a hit, with videos being uploaded more sporadically and sparingly. If Josh had done one thing right, it was the fact that he forced Airsoft Fatty to consistently upload. The most recent form of content that Airsoft Fatty has appeared in outside of his channel was an interview with The Eric Barber. The topic of Josh surfaced in the interviews and this is what he had to say. I hope things continue to get better because we have been through a lot and really sucked kind of just you know, a job like that, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm hoping things stay tight, you know. Okay. We, we, we might go at each other's throats, but at least he, you know, cares. Even after all that he did, Fatty was still open to view him in a good light. Like all of us, he's had a really bad run over the past two years, probably even more so. Unfortunately, due to all the incidents involving Josh, the channel has started to fade into obscurity. The channel had turned into something completely different that his original fanbase had subscribed for. There was no Battle Creek and none of his original friends. Chris has no longer been producing the content that people want to see. He's been getting lazy and only been smoking joints on livestream. People were also upset that Chris brushed away all his friends and didn't stand up to Josh and allowed himself to be manipulated to this point. Despite all this, he's still turning up to make videos and creating content. 2022 is Airsoft Fatty's year part two. It is gonna be the year of positivity, of change. It's the year where I'm about to be surrounded by nothing but support. And I'm gonna go through life being a lot more happy. For this, he is commendable and he has my respect. Having spent two weeks researching for this video, I can now safely say I'm a professional in airsoft fatty history. So drop a comment if you have any questions. <sighs> I don't know if I should be proud or disappointed by that. My brain is filled with airsoft fatty lore, so please fill it up with something else. For example, a like and subscribe? Hmm? I'll have a link to Fatty's channel in the description as well, so please check out his channel to show some love and see how he's doing now. Anyway, that's all from me, so thanks for watching and have a lovely day.